Today we're going to talk about diction, a literary device that you're going to be very familiar with with me. I really believe that for AP literature, if you can understand diction and you could interpret diction, it's going to make you do very well on every single essay and on interpreting any piece of literature, whether it be a poem or prose passage. Because diction, at its very core, really just means author's word choice. Now, it's a simplistic definition. I don't want you to walk away from this video thinking that that's all it is because it's it encompasses a lot more. But for our purposes now, diction is just going to mean the words that the author uses. And it's very related to tone. It's very related to syntax as well. So throughout our course, you're going to learn that diction can make you end up interpreting what the author's tone is in a passage and also looking at syntax a little bit more critically as well. And if you do those things, if you have even just those three things in your tool belt for AP literature and you can talk about those on the essay, you're going to be doing a fantastic job and you're going to score very, very well. Now, in order to explain it a little bit better, I want to give you an example from Lori House Anderson's book called Speak. And I'm going to read the passage and just highlight some of the terms that are coming up, some of the author's word choice, so that you can get a sense for how I'd be interpreting this passage. So here we go. Welcome to Merryweather High. Right away I would stop. I'd say, why did the author use those words instead of something else? Now I wouldn't necessarily look too much into welcome, although you could, or to, or even high, but Merriweather is very peculiar because you got to ask yourself, there was a lot of options available for the author to use some other term to describe this school. The author could have named this fictional school, also the setting for most of the book, anything they wanted to, and yet they chose to do Merriweather High. And if you recall in Foster's book, How to Read Literature Like a College Professor, he talks a lot about weather and how it's significant. So I also would sit there and stop and say, it's probably significant that the school name here is Merry Weather, right? Merry meaning good or joyful and joyful weather. But yet we then have to ask ourselves through reading the book is, does it measure up? Is it being used sarcastically? Is this some type of sarcastic diction? Is it uh, supposed to convey some sense of this is a very happy school, that the people here are always very joyful, not necessarily weather outside, but the weather in their hearts, right? Their emotional um, stability. Are they emotionally happy? Are they distressed? Are they going through turmoil? That's what just one word makes me think of, and it's going to help me analyze the rest of the book. But we move on. It is my first morning of high school, so she's a freshman. I have seven new notebooks, a skirt I hate, and a stomach ache. Again, I'd pause. I'd say, you know what? She, using the word hate, what connotations does that bring? Well, very negative ones, right? And that's the thing with diction. The number one thing I would say before trying to describe and use an adjective for the type of diction, just put a happy face or a frowny face next to some words. And then at the end of a passage, see, are there more happy faces or frowny faces? What kind of connotations are the words that the author is using saying to us, right? The connotation of hate is very, very bad, right? The connotation of a stomach ache could be that this this girl is, this freshman girl is anxious about being in school, right? Especially first day. N nothing abnormal, but again, this is Merriweather High. So it seems weird that a person going to Merriweather High seems very anxious. Well, what's she anxious about? Gotta read more. The school bus wheezes to my corner. So again, ask yourself, why did the author choose the word wheezes? It could have just said the school bus stops to my corner. The school bus slowly stops to my corner. The school bus abruptly ends at my corner. Anything like that. You know, you get the point. But yet this author used wheezes. What connotation does wheezes bring to you? What, what do you think of when you heard the word wheezing? I hear of somebody like coughing and like gasping for breath. It's very negative. So I would put a frowny face there for sure. And I'd say that's negative diction being used there. It's still not happy. And it's matching this girl's feeling right now of she hates her clothes and she has a stomach ache. Next sentence. The door opens and I step up. I'm the first pickup of the day. So what connotations go with being the first pickup? 
right? It's it's probably uh, pretty pretty negative, right? Because if she's the first pickup, she has to be out there earlier. So already this is pretty depressing. The driver pulls away from the curb while I stay in denial. So again, pulls away. Why does the author use that instead of something else? Again, this might seem very tedious, but if you do this, you're really looking into the text as much as humanly possible. And is it going to lead to sometimes you being wrong? Yes, definitely. I'm wrong a lot of times. But that's the great thing about literary analysis is it's kind of like checks and balances. You read one passage and you come up with your hypothesis and then you test it by the time you're done with the book because you might get more information. You might get the author saying different things at different times using different words and then you know, oh, you know what, I thought that was a negative diction being used but it's actually not, it's positive. So it can change throughout the course of a book. But here so far, very negative frowny face type of diction. And again, you could go online and search for different adjectives that you can use to more accurately describe this. But for our purposes right now, we're just asking, why did the author use this instead of that? Right? Why this word instead of that word? Where to sit? I've never been a backseat waste case. If I sit in the middle, a stranger could sit next to me. If I sit in the front, it will make me look like a little kid. But I figure it's the best chance I have to make eye contact with one of my friends any of them have decided to talk to me yet right but she says the front is the best chance right so there's something hopeful here is like yes I have to endure appearing like a little kid but it's the best chance I have to make eye contact with one of my friends if any of them have decided to talk to me yet which clearly is implying something went down between her and her friends the bus picks up students in groups of four or five as they walk down the aisle, people who are my middle school lab partners or gym buddies glare at me. So again, that word really pops out to me, glare. Why use the term glare as opposed to something else? Right? Glare has a very negative connotation. It's somebody like staring at you and just glaring, right? It's not, you know, sidelong glances. It's not really quick stares it's not even just saying staring right staring is an awkward type of term like it could be kind of funny but glaring even sounds angry I close my eyes this is what I've been dreading as we leave the last stop I'm the only person sitting alone so it's kind of matching up with everything that we've had for our hypothesis so far if this is all very negative diction that's leading some emotions in ourselves to sympathize more with this narrator the driver downshifts to drag us over the hills the engine clanks which makes the guys in the back holler something obscene someone was wearing too much cologne i try to open my window but the little latches won't move a guy behind me unwraps his breakfast and shoots the wrapper at the back of my head it bounces into my lap a ho-ho so here the diction changes a little bit. It bounces into my lap. It's a ho-ho. It's funny, right? This is, again, is a freshman girl. And it's Meriwether High. It's supposed to be happy, but yet she's not happy entirely. But she has the propensity to be happy. She has that potential. So it goes on, and, and just to give you a little bit of context later on, she's just going to talk about the school a little bit more, and then she goes in and she actually names a bunch of different groups. At another point in the book, it shows that one of her best friends who wasn't talking to her isn't not only just glaring at her, but is mouthing silently that she hates her. Like, right? Not actually saying it. So in terms of diction, that's really significant because why did the author choose to have a character uh, mouth silently? Why not just yell out? Well, there's different connotations. If you yell out, I hate you. The connotation there is it's a it's a reaction right of something that happened if somebody came and busted through this room right now interrupted my video punched me in the face I might get up and say I hate you or even just yell obscene, obscene remarks right but if I see somebody from afar and I'm looking at them and I know that they see me and I don't even say the word I just go then you know that there's some deep-seated hatred going on there. This isn't a petty argument that these friends are in. It's not something small. It's something huge. So again, just to recap, diction is the author's word choice. And what you can be doing on your own 
is practicing by just breaking down words and asking yourself, why did the author choose this word instead of that? Sometimes it can be difficult to point out which words are significant. That'll come with practice. For now, every single word is up for grabs. Why did the author use this? Why did the author use that? What could they have used instead? Do a little practice by changing up one of the words that they used and add your own word and see, does that change the tone of the passage? Because diction always is going to lead you to talk about tone. It just does that because it, this is at its base level for literary analysis, it's just picking out words, one of the smallest units of our language, right? One of the smallest units of literature is made up of words that are put together, right? But why use those specific words as opposed to something else that was available? So do that. Uh, search in some of the things that you're reading, some passages that might do well with diction, and put some frowny faces, some f smiley faces next to it to help get a sense of why the author is using those specific words. And you'll be, be much better off doing that because this is just one step in literary analysis. It seems really simple, it seems tedious, like it won't work, but it really will. And it can also work with poetry. It really works good with small passages, which is why I focus on diction so much in the school year, because I know if I hammer it into my students and they understand interpreting words in small passages, they're going to write very well. They're going to have something they could pull out and talk about. They could explain some type of diction being used. Because remember, in the AP exam, you're given small passages. For the essays, you're given uh, a prose passage, which is usually just about a page long, two columns, and you're given a poem. And then you have to also write that third essay, but the first two essays are based on small passages, so you could almost always talk about diction.